right, so let's see what time is it. Is it? It's 3.03. How's everyone doing today in uh, chilly uh, Chicago? Great? Excellent. Um, trying to stay warm. Trying to stay warm. Yeah, wonderful. The, uh, um, my name's Nye Wang, uh, pronounced like Bill Nye, the science guy. Uh, love that guy, he stole my name. <laughs> Uh, and then um, I'm actually going to be your master of ceremonies today at, uh, uh, during this conference. So as the master of ceremonies, I have the pleasure of introducing t today your speaker, me. <laughs> but, but, be, uh, but actually I have a, a better way to, uh, um, better introduction than that. So I'm going to start with the, this quick little video um, that uh, from one of my most embarrassing moments. Also, we have a very, very wonderful treat today as well. Um, I have uh, Dr. Lisa Asante uh, with me through Skype. Uh, and she'll be speaking about uh, how she flipped the classroom. So she actually, uh, so I actually have to give her an introduction. Uh, she is a uh, associate professor at uh, Southern Utah University. And she uh, is a pioneer of uh, new technologies and new ways to, to get to students to learn. And in fact, uh, last week, she, asked, she spoke at a conference on this very topic. So I, I asked her if she wouldn't mind sharing some of her insights during my presentation so that you guys don't get so bored of me after two hours um, of me speaking. So with that being said, uh, let's go move forward uh, to this is my most embarrassing moment. I like this video because uh, this is the first time I spoke in front of 6,000 uh, educators. And just watch. Just watch this morning's speaker. Come on, know you're going to. And the Association of Career. Don't wait for just a minute, please. Welcome the founder and president of Kennedy Education Systems, Nye Wang. I, 
I probably overused that uh, video, <laughs> but I really like it because um, it really demonstrates the, the, that, um, well, one, I'm human, and second, that um, that I wasn't uh, the the perfect model student when I was at at school. That I uh, that I had uh, the problems, like uh, I actually have a uh, reading deficiency where I can't read a book, and, and that was like one of my biggest uh, hurdles to uh, overcome. So, oh no, so like, you know, so so just kind of a little, a little about me is that like you know is that you know I didn't come from like you know Harvard or Yale or, or at least like hey, thanks <laughs> um, bad student there uh, that I didn't you know that I came out of the, the the roots and I had to learn to overcome my deficiencies and because of that I wanted to figure out ways to reach kids like myself. Uh, utilizing what I gravitated towards was technology. So, like, so first thing is like you know, uh, maybe you don't know, but I grew up in a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> that, uh, so, you know, throughout that whole part of my childhood, uh, I was in the restaurant uh, industry. Yeah, birthed into it basically. Uh, we call slave labor, right? <laughs> and uh, free labor too. So, and I and I grew up in, in that industry, and I hated it. I hated it so much that. I wanted to do something to improve it um, because I lost all my like, weekends and nights you know, because I had to work. I couldn't go out, party, and anything like that. Um, I also have, uh, fortunately for me, I was never diagnosed this, but I have ADHD that, um, you know, I, I have a hard time focusing. But actually, it's a really good thing that my parents, who own a restaurant, were not wealthy enough to get me <laughs> diagnosed because I turned my biggest deficiency into my greatest asset. So now, because I train my brain, I'm able to focus on so many different things at once and be able to digest it all. So if I, if I was, you know, if that was taken care of, then I would have lost my advantage. So I turned that into my advantage. Um, so, you know, uh, like I said earlier, uh, English is a second language. You know, Chinese was my first language. I had to go to speech class. They had to teach me how to uh, pronounce words correctly. And I think I've uh, they've done a pretty good job at that, haven't they? Um, so you know, because of that, you know, uh, I gravitated towards computers, uh, and then you know, I also married the, my two passions, uh, food, and then uh, created magic. So what I want to, to, you to know is that um, it took uh, me a decade to reach me. So to to basically say that. Um, I've been focused, laser focused, on this one subject, which is culinary arts and education, for over a decade. Uh, I know you guys all have devoted your lives to it too. And even though I look really young, I spent uh, my entire adult life on this subject. So, so that's about me. Now, on to uh, Lisa Sante. Uh, so Lisa, you can't see the slide, but I put a bullet here that says, you did a lot of stuff. So if you want to uh, you know, give a little uh, bio about yourself, um, then uh, that'd be great. Lisa, can you hear me? I can hear you barely. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yes, yes. they can all hear you. Okay. So, my bio is, um, I've been teaching for about 16 years. Prior to that, I had about 17 years in the hospitality industry. Oh. Great. And uh, currently I teach at Southern Utah University. I'm an associate professor in the School of Business. And I adopted this product, oh, about a year ago. Um, and I've been using it in my quantity food production class. And the, probably one of the biggest things that I have found about, well, there's a couple of them, about using the KP Compass online textbook is that the students have a much, much greater retention level when they come into my lab class than they did when they were using an ordinary textbook. And I think it's because this generation of students really learns well online, and it's an interactive system, so you can upload videos, and you can really do, customize it however you want it. So I was able to choose the chapters I wanted, import the information I wanted. Well, are, you still, are you still hearing me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, okay. uh, we'll get into that topic. Uh, we didn't really plan, uh, we didn't really plan ahead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because it was kind of last minute. Uh, but uh, we're going to talk about the, the topic of like, you know, the, the effects of flipping the class and what, you know, why it's effective uh, uh, um, 
And uh, but uh, but basically, you know, just <laughs> uh, a little bit more about yourself and, and less about oh. uh, that. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I guess my industry experience was primarily in the food and beverage arena, and I was uh, all. Gotta love Skype. Food service in the business and industry segment, million dollars worth of business that I was responsible for, and um, in between my my industry career, I went back and forth to do my three college degrees, and. Uh, at one point, I went and worked for the Venetia Resort in Las Vegas, and I was a manager of training and development. We had about 4,500 team members and 500 managers, and I was responsible for the leadership development programs for those individuals, which is great because that really translates into my academic career pretty nicely. And so um, when I completed my PhD at Texas Tech, I moved to University of Hawaii and taught there for a couple of years, and since then I have been teaching here at SUU. And um, this year I have um, just received tenure and promotion, so now that's what makes me an associate professor, so that's been pretty exciting. I don't know what else you want to know about uh, my personal background. <laughs> I think that's good. You know, so in other words, she has done a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, um, so. The, to the topic of this uh, discussion is uh, we're going to be going through a series of, uh, of, of uh, why, what, and how. We're going to talk about why we flipped the classroom, and uh, and Lisa will, will, will speak to like you know the, the reasons why uh, she did it and why she, and and the effects of that. Uh, uh, the what, so basically the, the, the tools, and I'm going to be outlining about uh, eight free tools that are on the internet that you can use right in the classroom to be able to accomplish that. And then the how will be the portion which we'll be spending the most of the time is uh, I'm going to demonstrate these tools and actually kind of show you how we would assemble a class and then uh, start using these tools to, to put everything together. Uh, and what, and uh, one of the, the tools, obviously, is the the, uh, the platform that I developed, which is a which is a uh, free free platform to use, so you could actually kind of uh, c put everything together, along with like a bunch of other uh, uh, platforms and online tools. So, um, so with that being said, okay. So first off, we're going to talk about you know why do we flip the classroom? Well, if, uh, does anybody know what flip the classroom means? Anybody uh, want to uh, uh, Chef Riggs? It? Put the responsibility for learning primary on the students. That's a very good answer. Put the responsibility of learning right there on the students. It really gives them ownership. Anybody else have any uh, uh, thoughts on that? Anybody? Yes? Thinking what's possibly done in the classroom and what's done outside the classroom and flipping those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very good definition of, uh, you know, you know, of uh, instead of uh, being the, the and um, the deliverer of information, you'll actually, you're actually going to be like, you know, I like to put it like, you know, honing the knife. You know, you, you get them to a certain point and then you help them hone their skills help, so that you're actually perfecting their, their abilities rather than trying to get them to that, that starting point first. Okay, so there's a really good video. Um, um, next. So they, the way I think about it is that the textbooks of yesterday don't fit with the students of tomorrow. And that's one of the things that like, you know, we're, we're trying to do is we're trying to get away from the t standard textbooks and we're trying to create something uh, new that really uh, speaks to this generation. So, so we're moving away from the traditional classroom, uh, more into group-oriented activities, projects, projects-based learning, and, and things like that. And technology is a tool that allows us to be able to facilitate that because you unfortunately cannot clone yourself 30 times. But you can put yourself create a digital footprint that can be utilized over and over and over again. All right, so for kids, it's all about information at your fingertips. And since my video is playing properly through PowerPoint, I'm going to go directly to the file. Okay, we're 
are going to stick this in here, and then I'm going to pour in the milk. <laughs> I hope this works because I didn't bring a change of pants. Look, I googled it. It's a fake pigeon. <laughs> Geeks, uh, rocket scientists, or uh, engineers trying to uh, live out their geeky lives. <laughs> it's like my world, except I'm not a rocket scientist. <laughs> okay, so um, so because of that, you know, so so the, the, those are the, the kids that, that that's the batch that's growing up right now. You know, they want the information now. They want it on their uh, mobile devices. They want it on their phones, and that's how they how they operate in the real world. And we need to try to mimic that in the classroom and out. So, because of all this technology, anybody feel this way? You know, you're so swamped. You're you're overwhelmed by all these new things. And I see one person, two people raise their hands. All right, come on. Anybody else? Everybody should raise their hands. Almost. But the, but the thing is, like you know, it, it's so overwhelming. And I, and I'm here to basically kind of like dispel the uh, the myth that yes. It, it is overwhelming, but if you take baby steps, you could actually uh, accomplish some amazing things. Okay, so this next video here I'm going to show you is a teacher um, who flipped her class, and it's actually a math teacher. So, uh, but the thing is, all the concepts she's talking about is uh, is very applicable. I've been teaching math for the last five years, and this is why I flipped my classroom. This is what my classroom used to look like. I was teaching to the middle group of the class. The students yeah, that could follow along with what we were doing, and we were going through the content. While I had a group of higher level students, not challenged, bored with the information, ready to move forward. And I had a struggling group of students that were not receiving enough effective remediation. They didn't have the basic content they needed to be working on the content we were currently covering, or they needed more help in order to be successful. This led to a 90% use of class time being spent on delivery and review of content. 90% of the time I was at the front of the classroom lecturing to a group of students and I wasn't meeting all of their needs. 10% of class time was actually spent on application, which led to, depending on students, to do the application needed to be successful. They had to go home or outside of class and work on applying the concepts that I was giving out in class. This constant battle of not reaching the needs of all students and feeling the need to differentiate for all of my learners let the teacher allows teachers to feel overwhelmed and ineffective because we see the need for differentiation, but there's just not enough time for effective differentiation. This called for a drastic change in how we teach. This is where flipping the classroom comes in. Now the students outside of class preload the content. They get the information they're going to need for class. They can pause, rewind, and rewatch the videos as many times as they need to. They can post questions online to their classmates or to the teacher. And it's a self-paced program where they can be remediated by going back and reviewing former topics, or they can work ahead when they've already mastered a concept and are ready to look forward. They get the content here before class so that when they come into class, my whole classroom has now shifted, where I'm at the center of the class, working between these differentiated groups, focused on different pieces of application. I can now work between each of these groups that are moving at their own pace. This has created a 90% use of class time spent on application of the content, and 10% of class time is spent on delivery of content, when I can answer questions that have been posted, or take any other questions that have come up from applying the content. Now in my classroom, all students are engaged and challenged. I have time to work with each group, give them individualized time and instruction as they need, and I can actually work between each of the groups to provide effective 
differentiation for all my varied groups of learners, my struggling students, my middle group of learners, and I can now extend and expand on my higher level students' prior knowledge and challenge them in, in the classroom. To learn more about flipping the classroom, visit the Friday Institute's website. You guys want to write that down or not? I've been teaching math for the oh, last five years. Kind of, I got the loop mode on it, must be. <laughs> oh, look, your video's up. So there's Lisa. Uh, so now, uh, I just popped your, I just popped your video up, Lisa. So I just noticed that you, people can see you now. Oh, they can. Okay. All right. Now, so um, a couple more, couple more things, and then, uh, and then I'll uh, ask you a few questions. Um, so let me ask you this. Uh, you know, what what kind of instructor are are you? Like, oh, actually, let me first ask. Uh, uh, in the in the audience, like, you know, who here are like you know uh, high school educators? Raise your hand. Okay, uh, you know, college or university? Raise your hand. Okay, good, good. Um, any like just industry people in here, or all educators, right? Oh, about one industry. Okay, fabulous. So a lot of things that we're we're doing today uh, would would apply to you too, because you can think of classroom as like you know trying to get reach your uh, your employees within that. So you know a lot of people you know are. Uh, Focus on this. You know, the Lord by the board. You know, I'm I'm the expert. I'm going to be teaching everything. Uh, everything comes through me. I am the word of law. And that that style of teaching um, isn't as effective anymore because there's so much other stuff going on out there. So are you the uh, the guide by your side uh, instructor? You know, our, our our roles are shifting. That um, that. Um, instead of being the dispensers, we're actually facilitating and helping and, like I said earlier, honing their skills rather than dispensing. So which, uh, you know, so does anybody here uh, apply any differentiating instruction techniques? Anybody? Uh, what, uh, can, can you like share what you do? Well, we use your system. Okay. And then we also just have several things the students are kind of required to do is their ticket into the classroom. Mm -hmm. And so, when we begin instruction, we offer a quiz to kind of uh, assess how they've done. And so, that's one of the ways that we make sure they do their homework and everything mm -hmm. they need to do before they come into class. Wonderful, wonderful. And you throw your hand? You. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're talking about, but I have my students work with chapter reviews in teams mm -hmm. so that. I might have a PowerPoint, I might go over things that are included in the text, but it's up to them to then redigest it and send it back out. Can everyone, you probably can't hear what she said in the back, can you? Can you? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. No, no, no. Okay. I'll just project. Okay, just project. You, you Didn't, put on your teaching voice. Well, hello. <laughs> um, in class, what I like to do with the students is I do a lot of teaching, just demonstration work, and when I have chapter reviews, I'll have them do it in groups. So they break down the chapter together and then present it to their uh, to the class. So they're responsible for kind of understanding it. And if they don't understand something, or they're, the other students don't understand something, they're kind of in the same boat and can help each other out. Okay, great. Thank you very much for sharing. Anybody else want uh, want to share? No. Okay. So like you know so. Another, the, the next level of uh, instruction is, you know, catering to multimodality models. Multi, uh, basically, um, what that means is like, you know, every learner has a different style of learning. So whether it be, you know, audio, video, uh, kinesthetic, and whatnot. Uh, some people do great reading. Uh, some people like need that. You know, within our audience, like we need a lot of like uh, hands-on and video because we're, we're more like a, a, a hands-on type of uh, education, but. But the, but the thing is, like you know, everybody learns in a different way. So what we want to do is we want to create uh, high rigor, and and to mention that like you know you're here at Fenny because you want to become better in your craft as well. So we're we're all going to be great learners. So uh, this image here, uh, this kind of like uh, is how I feel like the uh, the, the students learn. 
nowadays. So back in the past, you know, our form of entertainment, or uh, for many of you, was uh, was uh, you know, watching cartoons. You know, so we have Felix the Cat, SpongeBob, Smurf, so Mickey Mouse here, and that's what I call a, a passive uh, entertainment. You know, you're, you're being entertained. These uh, these characters are doing things. Uh, they're making you laugh. They're ca carrying out a story. So so basically, you're being passively entertained. But now today, you know. The way that uh, kids are entertained now is uh, through these iconic figures. So we got you know, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, uh, Mario, Link uh, from Zelda, and uh, uh, Solid Snake from uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid. So basically, the difference is like you know this is passive entertainment, and now they're actually interacting with these characters. They're doing stuff. They're controlling their destinies, and that's the kind of control that the kids nowadays really want in their own education as well, because they're, they're used to being uh, operating in that manner. So that's a very big shift in how uh, they, <coughs> they see things. So flipping the class was made popular by Khan Academy. Anybody here heard of Khan Academy before? Okay, Khan Academy has gotten like lots of press over the past uh, year. And basically what Khan Academy was, this uh, a gentleman by the name of Salman Khan created these math videos and started posting them on YouTube. Like how, because he was tutoring uh, his, uh, his niece uh, in a different state. So he's like, okay, here, I'll show you these concepts, and, uh, but let me put it on the internet. And as he was, put, he was putting these math videos on the internet, people from all over the world started watching it. And then teachers started using it. And now um, he uh, just got like, you know, it's a nonprofit. You got like uh, I think five million dollars to start to really build that entire concept, and Khan Academy uh, really he didn't he didn't invent it, but he started to make it popular. He made he brought it into the mainstream media, and everyone's talking about it. Like uh, at schools, like parents are bringing up like, oh, why aren't you flipping the class? Like and the teachers are like, what? <laughs> why would I want to flip the class? But this is like a year ago when when the concept was very very new, and uh, and the, and the way I see it is. If the media gets a hold of something and promotes education, that's a good thing, right? So we don't we don't want any we don't need any more of the uh, the bad news like you know schools aren't performing, but the thing is like you know now everyone's embracing the the flip model. So, but what flipping the the class actually is to me isn't anything new, actually. You know, back in the day, the teacher assigned chapter eight. I had to go home and read chapter eight, and then come to class and participate in a discussion. So what flipping the class actually is, is just homework 2.0. It's nothing new. We've been sending kids home with assignments, but now we're just reaching them in a whole new level. So now to the what. What do we need to accomplish that? Well, first off, we need devices. You know, we need computers. We need mobile technology, such as uh, cell phones. And we also need tablets. So we have, many of us have these devices, some of us don't have them in, have them in, the, in the classroom yet, uh, but the, the thing is like a lot of students already have these devices uh, in their pockets. So have you ever heard of the uh, BYOD movement? Right. Not BYOB, <laughs> BYOD. <laughs> of course, uh, we're all thinking about that right now. Bring your own device. So a lot of, a lot of schools are embracing this this method, and if they if the student doesn't have it, then they then they take care of uh, that uh, that lost equity in a way. But um, uh, there's this article that I'm going to uh, uh, share with you in a little bit that talks about like you know how a school like you know they decided to do that, and they had like increased engagement throughout. The, and and actually, they're uh, uh, by, by adopting that policy, there are incident reports of like you know of of misuse of the technology dropped dramatically. So a lot of people have concerns. So it's a really great thing, and I think I really encourage you to look at um, uh, at uh, adopting it. <laughs> so uh, this is a little story I want to tell you um, about BYOD because well, as educators we're like, oh, we don't want them to use cell phones. Well, we don't want them to like you know do that. So there's this, uh, a conference I went to uh, called Model Schools Conference, and uh, Bill Daggett spoke about pencils. Uh, did you know that uh, before World War II, before the Great Depression, schools used to provide pencils for students? Oh, 
But during the Great Depression, they were facing a big budget crisis. The reason why they provided it is because they could hand the pencil to the student and then they collect it at the end of the day. So they're controlling uh, the, the, the use of pencils. When they started facing a, this uh, big financial crisis called the Great Depression, you know, kind of like in one right now, <laughs> the, uh, the schools were like going, okay, we can't really do that anymore. So what if we allow the, the students to bring pencils from home? And the education community was like, all in an uproar. They're like, you can't do that. You know, kids can write on walls with these pencils if we're not regulating. You know, they can use it to write notes to each other and pass it around. They might even poke each other in the eye. So, so they're like, no, we can't do that. So this is just kind of like a, a little anecdote as to like, you know, what we're facing today with smartphones. These are tools that they already have at home. Why not embrace that? All right, so the next thing we need is access. Now, with the proliferation of uh, Wi-Fi now, you know, especially like free Wi-Fi hotspots, uh, such as like, you know, Starbucks, McDonald's, actually virtually almost any fast food restaurant now, um, access isn't as uh, a, a hurdle as it used to be. And every school should have internet now, and they all have Wi-Fi. And then the last thing you need is content. So the content can be on the web, it can be found on YouTube, it can be OER, which uh, stands for, uh, um, um, what does it stand for? <laughs> uh, open Educational Resource, sorry. <laughs> open Educational Resources, or it can be created by you. And additional tools that, that you use to create. And they're free, too. That's the beauty of it. A lot of these internet tools are free. Uh, there's some paid for ones that are better, but we all look free, don't we? Okay, so. Ah. Keep getting shocked. Maybe that's what's causing the videos. No, that wouldn't do that. Huh? We heard it. Oh, you heard it? Yeah. yeah, I'm generating so much electricity. I'm electric. When, uh, how, how are you doing, Lisa? Are you hanging in there? Doing okay. All right. So thanks for uh, hanging in there. I probably should have had you speak earlier, but oh, that's okay. But uh, anyway, but we're gonna. Th well, what the topic is uh, is like you know how how you uh, flip the class, and I just want you to share uh, some of uh, the result, uh, some of like you know how you did it, uh, some of uh, a little bit about like you know the results, uh, kind of like kind of go into like the uh, anticipation before you did it. Before you, uh, what, uh, and actually, uh, before that, let's think about. Let's talk about like you know, what were what was your thought process when you were when you uh, decided to do something like that uh, before you, you took the plunge. So let's start with that question. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So a few years ago, what I was realizing in my classroom is students don't like to open their textbooks, and they think they're going to learn the material by sticking it under their pillow at night. I think and through <laughs> osmosis or something. So I was trying to think of ways that I could get them to actually read the material before they came to class because the best way that I learn is through actually doing things and I tend to find that most of my students learn better if we have hands-on activities or something to that effect that can reinforce the concepts in the book but they don't want to sit there and just listen to me read the book, reiterate the book and lecture straight at them. Uh, so. What I decided to do was start by hybriding my classes, and we use, uh, 
Well, I've used a bunch of different systems, but here at SUU, we switched recently to a system called Canvas, which is very user friendly. And so all of my classes are web enhanced. So they have components where they're required to do, I call them progress checks to check their knowledge. They're like a little quiz. They're open book, open note, and they're designed to make them read the material before they come into the classroom. They also um, have the ability to take them two times. And I will, I've done different models on that where I've taken the high score or averaged them. Right now I'm taking the high score because my opinion is if they go back and actually reread the material and are interested enough to try it twice, I'd rather give them the benefit of the higher grade. Now, it's not the same questions. They're from large question banks, so you know maybe they don't do better on the second go around, and they'll still end up with their highest score of their attempts. And so by doing that, that made them much more prepared for in the classroom, and then I can run activities, case studies, different types of things to test their actual knowledge and to see how they're, um, how they're progressing. And then it's a much more fun, interactive classroom than just listening to the talking bobblehead at the front of the room. And so part of my goal with that was to make sure I was kind of following some of the higher impact educational practices that are out there. And it allows me to do take them out into industry a little bit more often and um, allows them to do service learning where they go out into the community and we partner with uh, different organizations and then they can do community service that's tied to their learning outcomes in that fashion because it's actually they've learned some of the material and then in class I do I do lecture a little bit or hit on concepts that I want them that are, you know, I think the most important concepts that I want them to really understand. So it allows me to be more project driven. Um, we are also able to collaborate with other departments across campus by doing the flipped classroom model. So where more of the burden on studying the content and learning the content falls on the student and then where we are doing more of the homework driven or project driven things in the classroom. So my classes are mostly a lot of them are writing intense where they have to write a fair amount for me. Um, so that's kind of where my thought process was when I started it a few years ago and it's actually worked pretty nicely and some of my colleagues have um, joined the bandwagon so to speak. Thank you Lisa um, for sharing that thought. Yes. Um, uh, just a quick poll in here. Uh, who, who here uh, has actually implemented a flip model in their in their class? One. I, I don't say we would implement a flip model, but that's just how we teach. Yeah. Forever, I don't, I don't know how to do it the other way. <laughs> okay, good. So one, two, three, four. I think I saw five hands. Um, so as you can hear, uh, you know, Lisa uh, Lisa has uh, you know, tried a lot of things. Uh, just full disclosure, she actually is a, uh, a user of uh, the, uh, the KB Compass platform as well. So, so that's part of uh, um, her success story. So, at, so, so when your students, uh, when you gave the students all these assignments and told them, you know, the, this is what they had to do, what was their first reaction? <laughs> you thought I was a little crazy to give them quizzes before I talked about the material. But uh, it's really caught on. and they seem to embrace it because they don't feel like they're wasting time sitting in class. I have a better attendance in my classes than I did prior also because I'm not just going over stuff that they were in theory supposed to read and I'm not spoon feeding them everything. And one of the things I've learned about this millennial generation and one of the things that came out of some of the studies on these kids is they really learn in about a seven minute clip, which is the time between commercials on a TV show, if you could believe that. So if you give them the opportunity to learn stuff at their own pace and faster where they can go through PowerPoint slides or you know some other method that I have online, they just seem to do better overall. I have better end results in the classroom as well. Great, great. And uh, I guess another thing is like they, they actually retain the information better too, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's been my favorite thing about KP Compass because I'm using it for a food production class. So it's an introductory class. We're not trying to make them chefs. We're trying to give them enough knowledge to go out there and be able to manage 
and understand a certain concepts. So um, when they come into the classroom and we're talking about certain effects of what's happening to the food during this process or how to cut and chop certain things, they've already watched the videos. They, some of them have been eager enough to try it at home. They've taken the online uh, mastery assessments and then we can actually have a much more rich conversation and they do remember it far, far better than the paper textbook. And when I was using the paper textbook and I used it for years, one of the comments I would get is, oh, I didn't realize in those chapters there was more than just recipes. Well, that's because they weren't always opening the book until they had to do something related to a recipe. So this way, they're flipping back and forth between computer screens and uh, video feed or other things that maybe I've put into the course, that kind of stuff, and they've, they've really retained it much, much better. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so we just spent about half an hour, or a little bit more than that, talking about why. So I just want to see, okay, um, for one thing, you know, a lot of this is a new concept. Uh, anybody here um, need any more convincing <laughs> about this concept? More you? We first started having 17 high schools sent to us over our share time school. So by having those little video clips and all those other alternatives, you know, those student misses a day, it, it's just so much easier to have them catch up that whole behind to have that accessible. Yeah, yeah, it's all about accessibility. So, so like, you know, so, yeah. so now that I've hammered the why into your heads. <laughs> That's, we're going to go into the how now. Unless if, does anybody have any questions for Lisa uh, before I let her go? And you're actually welcome to hang on, but I know you're really busy. You know, actually, the, we only talked like once when I asked her. She was in a conference and she didn't get home until like Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been really hectic. <laughs> but uh, but thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that. Anybody have any questions here for Lisa? No. Everyone's good. Good. All right. Great. So uh, you're welcome to hang out if you want, or if you want to you go, just, uh, just uh, we're good. OK. Well, right. I will probably go at this point. But thank you very much. And please feel free to share my information, Naya, if you want. If anybody has questions on how it all worked or how I set it up or any of that stuff, I'm more than happy to help any of you. All right, great. So uh, everyone give a round of applause to Lisa. There you go. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. All right, thanks. Have a great weekend. All right. So, so we're going to talk about like you know the house. So I'm going to go over the tools now and in the, in the and spend a lot of time on on how we would actually put all this together. Um, all the tools that I'm going to be showing you is absolutely free. You just need to just sign up for them. And and these tools allow you to be able to do uh, do what uh, Lisa is doing, which is like you know putting the information out there and. Uh, and uh, getting it to them in such a way. So, how do we do it? All right. How do we do it? Okay. Um, well, actually, uh, this is a good time to talk about this. Oh wait. Um, all the information that I'm sharing with you is actually in a um, an online classroom. Um, so, all you, if you want to get to the information, uh, just go to the kbcompass.com. You'll, when you sign up, you'll be a student, um, and then and then this is the course code you'll use to get to the materials, and the materials are all assembled uh, in in the platform. So uh, all the uh, all the different things that I am going to be demonstrating, and I'm also going also going to be adding additional information to it too, because uh, as I as I discover new things, I put it into that class. Is that case sensitive? Uh, the Oh wait, I've got to change the font. This is a zero, not an O, and this is a three. It's kind of weird, the font. So it's an online virtual classroom, and and um, when you sign up, you're a student. So we don't, I, I don't email you or anything like that. Um, so you won't get like marketing spam or anything like that. So it's because you're a student. We don't do that to students. Okay, now that you've all, everyone written that down? Good, good. So, don't forget to pass all your evaluations. Uh, 
So I kind of have a volunteer. <laughs> then I also have that same code and information on this blue slip too. The reason I had you write it down is because now you have it in two places. Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. content management. You need a place to put that content in an easily accessible way. Then we're going to talk about like tools to, to handle project management. Then we talk about uh, learning management. The learning management is basically how you wrap the, uh, that content that you manage and put accountability around it. So uh, making sure that they complete assignments and things like that. Then we're going to also talk about content creation tools, like how do you create original works. So the first one I'm going to show you is this uh, fabulous little tool. It's a project manager tool. I like this one because it's really easy to use. Called Trello. Anybody here heard of Trello before? Okay, no? Good. All right. So going back to the video. So this is a very uh, wonderful tool because it's um, it's a, uh, oh, I'm going to turn off the loop. There you go. Now it's not going to It's a wonderful tool because it's, it's a, what we call a web app, uh, meaning that you can actually use this on anything, computers, mobile devices. It doesn't, doesn't care. It's just a simple login. Oh. Why is there no sound? Oh, cards. And each card is one of the uh, little... Some I didn't read by If you've ever had to coordinate a team of people working on multiple projects, you know that the hardest part is keeping track of where everyone is up to and what everyone is working on. That's what Trello helps you see instantly at a glance. This is Trello. Trello is really simple, it's just a bunch of lists, and each list has on it multiple cards. And each card is one of the uh, little projects that your team is working on. On the right hand side, you see a bunch of images here. Those are all the people on this team, and they all have access to this board. And uh, this particular team is a company called Artist Exploitation Incorporated. What they do is find uh, young garage bands on YouTube, and then give them an extreme makeover, and uh, then an exploitative recording contract. So on the left-hand side, we have the new bands that we've just found on YouTube, and we, when we find a new one, all we have to do is click Add Card and type in the name of whoever we found on there. Um, each of these cards has a bunch of stuff on the back of it, which you get to just by clicking on the card. Uh, this one has uh, some voting, as you can see. There's a bunch of conversation, like a little chat here, and of course you can upload an embed thing. So there's an uploaded YouTube video of the uh, band uh, live at work. Uh, the first thing uh, that we're going to do on this team is uh, pick the top uh, ranked bands. Everybody votes on the ones that they like, and the ones that are best, uh, we're going to actually do live in-person auditions. And so we're just going to drag over some of those cards into the audition column in order to choose the ones that need an audition, and then I'm going to assign people to them. So I'm going to assign uh, Lena will be in charge of my little brother, and Tyler is Canadian, so you can do Girlfriend in Canada, and Justin's going to do Today Glamour. And I really like that today, that Lamar band, and it got a lot of votes. So I'm going to drag it up to the top here, uh, so we work on that one first. By the way, this stuff is all happening in a web browser over the internet, and everything is instantly synchronized as you make changes. So whatever changes I make here will immediately show up in all other browsers, uh, everywhere else on the internet. And so people can just keep a copy of this uh, open on their desktop and immediately see what's going on with their team as the changes are made. Um, they'll immediately reflect on it. All right, so Justin goes in, he does an audition of the Sedate the Lemmer band, he thinks they're really awesome, we're going to sign them up, and we send them over to the makeover department, just by dragging them over here. And I'm going to assign our makeover artist, Michael, to work on that. 
Um, Michael is going to actually just draw a little uh, image of what he thinks the band should look like. Uh, there's his drawing, and upload this uh, to the back of the card where everybody can see it. There we go. And uh, finally, he's going to send it over to the final review process when he's done. And I'm in charge of all the uh, final reviews, so I'm going to assign myself to that card. And uh, when I look at this band, there's a couple of changes that I want to make. So I'm going to add a checklist here of all the things that I want to change. First of all, I think it should be a little bit more glam. Uh, secondly, I want to somehow find a way to exploit the teenage girl's love for vampires and Twilight and everything to do with that whole thing. <laughs> and uh, third, more cowbell. <laughs> Once I've added my checklist, I'm just going to take this card and send it back to the makeover department uh, where Michael's going to go in there and make these changes that I've asked for. He's already got a picture uh, that has a slightly more glam version. And then you can check that off. Uh, for capitalizing on Twilight, he's just going to propose a different name band. That should do that. And the cowbell we can always add in post-production. No problem. So he sends it to me for final review, and I love it. And I just drag it over to the record first album column, where we assign our recording engineer, John, to work on that. Now, everything about this process is completely uh, reconfigurable at will. So, for example, uh, if, you wanna, if we decide uh, that this band has to wait another year to get a little bit older, uh, we can make a new list for bands that are waiting to get older. There we go, and uh, we can drag it over there and wait. It's a very simple process by which anybody can uh, keep track of everything that's going on easily. Let me show you a couple of other uh, simple Trello boards. Uh, this is not only for uh, exploiting youth bands. Uh, 400 Ventures is a VC firm. They invest in small startups, and uh, their deal flow comes in on the left-hand side, ideas for investments, uh, each associates, and then they get assigned. He's just going to show yeah, just a little uh, other examples. But what do you think about that tool? Pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we well, use it for our, our own internal production. Uh, you know, tracking where, where everything's going. But you think of it in the context. It's called Trello. T-R-E-L-L-O. Trello. So, uh, Trello. T -R -E -L -L -O. Trello. so and I'm going to actually log in here. And actually, since Lisa's not with us anymore, I'm going to turn this back around. <laughs> and kind of show you. So, can any of the users change anything at any time? Yes, that is the unfortunate thing. Yeah. But the thing is, you can undo, uh, but everything's tracked. So, so yes, uh, so there it is. Tracks who does the change? Yes. Okay. So, so Trello um, is, uh, well, for one thing, free. It's absolutely free. And it's because this company who made Trello did it for themselves, and they uh, and it was a byproduct of what they actually do, which is they do a lot of like you know. Um, Server IT, like you know, they, they're, they're in New York, and so so they're rolling in the dough. <laughs> but uh, so so they decided to offer this tool for free because they made it. Like, oh, this is awesome, and it's actually been a really great uh, PR move for them too. Got them even more business. <laughs> but the uh, but so it's free uh, because it was a byproduct of their own internal uh, needs. I mean, obviously they could sell it, but for them it's really nothing. All right, so this is my Trello account, and you know, here's here's my. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to open up a new board. So I'm going to, uh, I should do this right here. I'm going to call this one Feeny. Right. Okay, so there's the Fanny board. I just created it. Currently it's private and then uh, you can also make it public if you want. And you can start uh, adding numbers. Uh, so you just uh, go in here and you start typing people's names. And they have to accept uh, your request as well. I'm not going to add anybody. And all we need to do here is so come over here. Their name, is it their email come up automatically? Or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, Let's type in uh, John. Okay, so 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 they'll be in the mix. There's a lot of Johns, <laughs> but if, if it's somebody you've already connected be, with before, Jonathan. There's Jonathan. Uh, he's one of my employees, so pops up number one. Is that because they already have an account. You have to, they, you have to create an account first. I mean that's how they found it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you invite people who haven't yet become members so that, that they can become members? Yes, you just type in their email address. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so let's let's rename this from to do to uh, vastly overwhelmed. 
Okay. So you can easily just change it, and then I'm going to add a card here. So I'm going to say, like, you know, uh, mobile uh, lawn. Okay, so that's one task. And I'm going to assign, uh, just like I demonstrated before, and then move it over to the doing column. You can see there's an activity history there, and I could actually comment. So I can say, I am mowing lawn at noon. Okay. And then I, I enter that comment, and I'm going to create a little uh, checklist. So I'll call this one going preparation. And then I'll be like, you know, lower blades kill zombies. So, so you can see that like, you know, it's very intuitive. And that's what I really love about this thing. I've used and paid for other project management software before online, and sure, it doesn't do everything that those ones do, but all I, want, all I care about is like getting the, uh, the information out there and be able to track it all and, see, and, and, and be able to go like, okay, you know, I just need to like, you know, move stuff around. I could add additional descriptions here. Um, I could put a due date. This is due tomorrow. There we go. And, and you can, so I can, I can see that uh, your, your wheels are spinning now, think about the possibilities of how you can use it. So does anybody think that you, you can apply this in your classroom? Raise your hand. All right, half of you. <laughs> More, the rest of you are asleep, right? How many boards can you put up? Is it limitless? Oh yeah, you can create as many boards, and you can create as many lists as you want. So you could like another list, another list, another list. So on and so forth. So I just created list, 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 list. You know, you can rearrange them just by dragging it and doing stuff. You can see that there's an activity log down here of all my changes. So that's what I love about it. It's like you know, every single comment logged, every single uh, thing that's done on the card is uh, is is updated, and it creates this really wonderful uh, tracking system. Great for businesses, great for school, schools, and even great for like you know if you want to do a personal to-do list, like, you, can, you can tell your, your spouse, hey, uh, did you mow that lawn yet? You haven't updated the activity log on that, <laughs> and and do a lot of things with it. Is it really time-consuming to set it up? No, no, not at all. I mean, I just set up this board. No, but I mean, when you're actually setting up something for a competition for your students to compete. Yeah. Um, is, is it, does it take a lot of time, is what I'm asking, mm -hmm. to oh, set yeah. all that up for what they're going to do? And yeah, so the question was, does it take a lot of time to get to set it up? Well, the, the, really the, the time that's involved is, is figuring out how you, uh, what categories you want. You know, usually a good one is like, you know, uh, uh, waiting to be done, you know, doing, done. But you, got, you can basically you set up these columns to set up different stages of the process. Um, and then you, get, you know, as, as students complete them, they can move it from you know within their group, move move those step, steps in the process. You can have multiple uh, cards up there, so you can have people assigned to multiple uh, tasks and processes. So a lot of it just uh, depends on the time, you know, how, uh, planning ahead and figuring out uh, what's the best way. And my advice is to just create a very simple uh, board and just go, okay. This is what needs to be done. This is what we're going to do. And when you're done, put it in a done file or put it like you know, for review or something like that. Uh, sir, put oh, your hand first. Yeah. Um, if you're setting up a category for the, the students to submit projects and stuff like that, um, my concern was once I've kind of assigned feedback and moved them along as far as confidentiality, is there a way to limit the students' access to only their progress, or they're also seeing everyone else in class. Uh, unfortunately, it's completely it's completely open. Um, okay. uh, I mean, they keep updating it, so uh, they've added like some new things. Um, but I don't, I think that one of them is, uh, you know, they don't have that. You don't have that limitation. So use it, you know, for for what it is. Like you know, if you have things that that are confidential, then don't use it for that. I guess um, because it's it's a very open system and um, and. Um, I mean, it's private in the sense that you, you invite the people into that board. So in the cases, you might want to set up multiple boards. So you have a board for group A, board for group B, for, and then you separate them that way. Okay. So this board is for these participants only, and then another one for another group of participants. 
Yes, ma'am. I was just going to say that this would be a really good opportunity for students to organize themselves with group projects that you might find in class because they'll have to make the board and invite you in as the instructor uh -huh. and then you're just there looking making sure that everyone's pulling their weight and then you can kind of nudge the people that aren't involved like you know cause when you sign a group project with five people two people do the work and three people like yeah. scoot along you know so maybe that's a, a good way of monitoring that i mean i'll do group projects in my class beyond just like hands-on like you're in a kitchen and you need to do this so it's not really a helpful in that sense but like if you're in an academic Environment. Mm -hmm. I can see it working really well as long as the students are participating in it. Yeah, as long as they're participating. They have to be online and doing it. Yes, they have to be. Yeah. Part active participation is key. And she made a good point if you, if you didn't hear uh, in the back was that, like, you know, to use it as a tool for them to manage their own projects and have them invite you as the teacher into their board. So you're not setting it up, you tell them to set it up. Uh, well, you probably provide a template or something like that. Like, you know, these are the four categories I want to see, and then you know you create the the objects. You know each of these uh, cards, and then you know, it's like there you go, one, and then two. Yeah. And I just I just highlighted that card. You know you can actually label them with different uh, colors. You know you, you get to call this one like you know green. and so on and so forth. So that's Trello, everybody. Um, it's, uh, there's really not much more I could really show you other than, you know, what, what the heck did I just do? <laughs> All right, when in, when in doubt, reload the page. Oh, how the heck did I scroll like that? When in doubt, uh, there we go, let's go back. OK, so anyway, so yeah, just, just really yeah, just dive in and start, you know, first use it personally and just, uh, just to play around with it. I mean, it's a great to-do list. It's like I call it a to-do list on steroids. Because, like, you know, a to-do list, you know, all you can do is like, you know, check off things. Uh, but now you can have a to-do list that could be moved around a different stage and it can be commented on, and, and you can really create a nice workflow. All right, so everyone like Trello so far? Yeah, I want to see some enthusiasm. Thumbs up for Trello. All right, great. Two thumbs up. Oh. Print that? Huh? It prints okay too, or you can. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you should come over here. Okay. You have print, and then okay. uh, I didn't here. see print up there. Looks like it interfaces pretty well with Google Calendar too. Oh, uh, Google Calendar? Does it? <laughs> Good question. Where's Google Calendar? I, I I didn't think that it does. No, it doesn't. But it does uh, interface with uh, Google Drive, so you could okay. attach a file and use it for Google Drive or Dropbox. Okay, so, um, so that's Trello. The next thing I'm going to show you is um, uh, learning management. Um, basically, there's, there's, two, there's a lot of different learning management systems out there, and, uh, and I'm going to highlight uh, the one that I created called KB Compass, and another one that's really good for uh, communications is uh, Edmodo. So, now I promise you this is not a commercial for KB Compass, but it's a uh, but I want but I want you to see like the, the value of how we take all this information from documents to uh, videos to all these different things and put it into a, a, a mastery system that creates context. So, so what KB Compass is is, is a it's actually a content management system that wraps takes this these, these pieces of information and creates accountability. And and, uh, and mastery. So I know that uh, a few of you in here are current users of, of the KP Cup system, and um, and well, I only hesitate to say this, but like you know, can can, can you tell the, tell everyone if how, if it's effective or not? <laughs> uh, anybody? Uh, yeah, sure. Um. I'm the guy with all the papers coming down on it, and if you've ever seen Saturday you, Night you, Live, you all project to the audience. If, you, if you've already seen, if you've seen Saturday Night Live, when you have a computer problem come and IT comes in and they're like, "Move," um, that's Fred, and we kind of team teach together. And so Fred turned me on to uh, sous chef and KP Compass, and I thought, okay, another toy for us or an electronic textbook, one more thing to manage. Uh, but what it's done for me is that there's no time left in the day. I know. I know all of you guys are in 
in the same boat. Uh, you know, from ordering your own food to doing everything else, you just don't have anybody there doing it for you. So all the other teachers, it feels like they're there six to eight hours and you're there 10, 12, 15 hours a day. And so if a kid has missed class, I can point to sous chef, go over there and look at it. And when you want to show me you can do it, you can, instead of me reteaching one student what they missed. Or uh, if we film stuff and put it on there, they can see us doing it and they can compare it. But then what I didn't think about was how cool it is to be able to quickly look at that video or that PowerPoint before I teach something and still from, and still from, from sous chef uh, what I'm about to teach and enhance my own teaching or stuff that I've forgotten about that I've learned. Oh yeah, and also my mispronunciation of French words. I can, I can click on, on that word and I go, oh yeah, that's the proper way to say it. I've been ruining that word for years. Uh, and so um, it's enhanced my teaching just before I do a lesson. It's a good, quick refresher. And so I'm talking about that to my better half who is in the surge, in, in the medical world does surgeries. And it's what surgeons do before they do surgery is they look at how to do the surgery before they do it on videos now. They, they, they're actually going through it. So um, it's, it's, it's not a new concept for, I, for most, most people out in the industry, uh, like surgeons, but totally new for me teaching after 19 years. Um, how long have we had sous chef, Fred? What, four, four or five? Four or five, yeah. Four or five years, and uh, almost instantly I went, oh, well, how are they teaching it there? And I went, and, and now, like, if, if it's not on there, I'm like, well, how am I going to teach it? It's not on sous chef. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I still can do some of this. Um, and then, um, so then the kids catch on to what we're doing, and if they don't do it, they're in there doing it, and I, I walk into the computer side of our classroom, and there's a, ki a kid in there who's extremely special ed, He's got a cutting bar, board, a couple of potatoes, his knife, and he's got sous chef on, and he's hitting stop, and he's doing the cornet. And then he's going back. He just couldn't get it for me doing it and for me showing the video, but he could get it at his own pace. And it just was, it was wonderful, because I had no patience to sit with that kid for an hour teaching that one concept. But the, the kid thought about that on his own, and, and just he moved, he moved my classroom back over to the computer side. And at first, I was like, "There's food over by the computers. What are you doing?" And then when I realized what he was doing, it was it was wonderful. So it's it's given me back a bunch of time that I would have to devote to those students that aren't showing up or were sick or aren't getting it. Um, it it's enhanced it, and it's enhanced my teaching. Sorry if I was long winded on that. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, hey, hey. so. Um, for, for me, it's all about the feedback for a student. So this is just an example of like uh, what we call a learning module. So in the learning module, we have a topic. So this is food safety. You can uh, change it to extreme because there's a lot of extremely different things in here. Um, but you can see that the, you know, there's different color dots here. Uh, each of these pages is a, is a concept of information. Now we, we break things into concepts because uh, those are the, the, uh, the things that we want them to learn. And we group the concepts together into, into the module or the unit uh, learning objectives. So that's the way to think about what this system does. Is you can think of it as a personal tutor. So using a personal tutor analogy, you tell the students, OK, go to the tutor. You're going to learn food safety extreme. And the tutor has all this information to relate to the students. So the student goes in and they learn all these concepts. Then after the student is done learning those concepts, they, they say to themselves, OK, now I need to know how well I know this information. So they go to the tutor, and let's just pretend the tutor's me. And you say to the tutor, hey, how well do I know this information? And I'll say to the student, let me ask you a series of questions and determine that. So the student goes through a knowledge check process where they have a, a series of questions that they have to answer. And then the tutor will say, Tommy, I feel that you're OK on this concept. You're doing quite poorly on this concept. And you're doing really great on these concepts. So go back and study these red and yellow uh, 
pages of concepts and come back to me again. So Tommy goes and, and uh, study those, those pages of information. And in the meantime, these green pages have been removed so that they can continue in the remediation process. Uh, just ignore the gray ones. I just added those so those don't have any uh, data in here. So then they go back to the tutor and the tutor will say, okay, I want to see how well you know the information now. So the, the student asked that. So, the, so I asked the student, uh, Tommy, answer these questions. And there are different questions now from these concepts that are that pulled from. And I say, Tommy, you did great. I'm going to level you up from yellow, uh, from yellow to green. So congratulations. But on this page, you did worse. So I'm going to level you down. So you're, you're getting constant feedback and immediate feedback about you know, how you're performing. So you can go and focus on those areas that are of greatest need. So you continue through the process. Eventually, the pages go down to one page. And then after they mastered the information, um, they turn everything from red to orange and maybe green. And, and they feel confident. So you can think of it as like, I'm in the business of building students' confidence. Because when they have everything red, uh, when they have everything like not red, um, orange or uh, yellow or green, then that's a, it's a snapshot. It's a, it's a picture of how well they know the information. So they know that they are this good at this, con this content. So that when they're ready to take that exam, the summative exam, so you can think of this as all formative, because it's, it's continually changing. Then they have that, they, they, then they know. They know how they're doing. So to kind of like illustrate um, how this works, the magic behind it, so these concepts could be any piece of content. Video, it could be a PDF, it could be a PowerPoint slide, um, but the thing is, you want to make sure that the concepts are, are you know, very, very focused. Um, I'm going to go over here to the test tool, and let's get rid of that lousy picture of me. And here, you can see that each concept we have a, a large bank of questions. So those are the questions that are being pulled uh, when when the, uh, the when the student talks to the tutor. So you can think of this as the tutor's brain. So uh, as a tutor, I go, okay, I have these questions to pull from. So I'm going to pull this one, this one, this one. Now, this one's really a doozy. <laughs> uh, and then next, I'm going to pull this, this question, this question, this question, and so on and so forth. And I build that, uh, that uh, formative assessment for that student. And then second time around, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to use this question, this question, this question. There's actually adaptive technology in it as well. So if, if the student, if like, let's say 100% of the students got uh, this question correct, then we're going to bump it down on the priority list because it's too easy. So, uh, so there's like uh, so there's like automatic weighting going on within the system. So, uh, so the questions that get missed more get asked first, and then if they fail on the first time, they don't get asked an easier question so they can build their confidence as well. So, that's the, that's the, the basic gist of the system uh, uh, as far as like you know how um, how you achieve mastery. And it's all done through uh, content and questions. So kind of show you uh, what the content could be, which is we're going to go over all the tools that uh, how you can do this. Like this is just a content page. This is an internal content page. Now this is a uh, Khan Academy video. So like we talk about Khan Academy, this is a math video. In my humble opinion, the single most important biochemical reaction, especially to fructose, uh, okay. would actually so, sucrose would taste. But it, and then, uh, then we go to like, you know, this is a website, so you can place like, you know, any website. And the key with the, with this versus like you know, uh, uh, other methods is that you're not the students aren't clicking on a link and then being launched out into another uh, browser or tab. They're, it's it's all internalized, so that like you know, so that when they're done with this information, it's live. So I can actually come over here, change the serving size, convert it to metric, uh, and, uh, and it works like that. There we go, okay, and I'm done with this. What's next? Okay, okay, that's good. What's next? Okay, this is a video on blood-borne pathogens. This is actually made by a teacher in uh, Washington. Uh, <laughs> so the thing is, like, you know, YouTube is a wealth of wonderful information. Blood-borne pathogens, red up and sing it again. <laughs> that's really silly. Uh, so on and so forth. Like, this is a PowerPoint slide. Uh, and it's all, and so the, the thing is, we're, we're harnessing the cloud 
from other sources. So this is actually you know, utilizing a, a service called SlideShare. And SlideShare is free. I'll show you that in a minute. And here's a PowerPoint slide. No more, no more dispensing of files anymore. Because what we're doing is when we flip the class, we're actually doing away with, like, you know, um, um, I guess we would call it file 1.0, having to email people files, dealing with like the you know, version history. Now this is cloud file 2.0, <laughs> and so on. And like, you know, here's another one I'm going to demonstrate for you later called Slide Rocket, where you can just like you know, upload your presentation and it converts it into uh, an online format, like such, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, you could use. Uh, uh, Google products as well. So you, this is actually a live Google spreadsheet. Anybody here to use Google, uh, Google Docs, Google, anything? Raise your hand. Wonderful. A few of you. It's a really great service, and I'm going to show you how, how we do that as well. Uh, you know, this is a, a video tape, um, and this is uh, directly off of uh, uh, Food Network. Uh, my favorite chef, celebrity chef. You see, Elton, it takes more than macaroni and cheese. Yeah, see, that, that's actually right off of the website, so I'm not stealing it. They're actually, <laughs> they actually put it out there so that people could use it uh, and embed it into uh, other formats, like, you know, like a blog or something like that. And this is all still in your free section on your site? Yes. Or is that where we're at? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Basically, what I'm showing you is like the, 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 uh, the platform is, uh, is uh, the ability to assemble the information, and then after you assemble the information, then the only other thing you have to add is questions. So here's this uh, PDF document, and, I wrote, and all I have to do is come over here, uh, oops, type in the question. You can see I do a lot of those. Choose the type I want. Uh, choose the answer type. Wait, Weighted by blooms if I want to, if this is an apply question or something like that. And I hit save, and there we go. So I've just increased the tutor's brain by one more question. Okay, so anyway, um, oops, let's go back to text. You know, so, you know, more websites. Uh, basically, anything, you can assemble virtually anything um, from the web. And, and um, this is not a web website. Okay. okay. And then at the end, then we get, get taken to, this is the, uh, the, the formative assessment part. So student goes in and answers all these questions. Of course, there's a lot of them because this, this module is really large, so uh, I would recommend building uh, about eight pages. So let's, let me show you how we do that. And I'm going to show you as I show you different tools and how we incorporate that together. So, um, so uh, any questions on, on this so far? Any questions? Yes. Uh, this all sounds very interesting, but I'm afraid that if I go to try it, I can't remember any of this. So. Do you have YouTube videos yes. on top? Okay. YouTube videos and uh, instructional manuals on how to do it. Okay. It's really easy. Uh, of course, I say it's easy. Right. But uh, even he could use it. <laughs> I'm pointing at uh, YouTube, Fred, and uh, uh, sorry, I'm spacing on. Only a little bit you can use it. You get lost. You have to log in. Yeah, you can't even log in, right? Can you? I'm kidding. I have a question. Yes. So so when we go to this website, uh -huh. it's going to be empty. We're not going to see all of your stuff. No, no, no. Just do our own thing. Yeah, you could do your own thing, and that and that's the entire purpose of this. Is like you know, I'm giving you a tool that you can use to create mastery. Now, obviously, the way I make a living <laughs> is is stuff as basically selling my culinary arts content, which uh, a few of you use here, um, uh, and uh, and and that's the uh, the beauty. Of it. Yes, uh, question back there. Uh, I was just wondering about content. So if you create your own content. Um, can it be hosted on the site, or does it need to be hosted somewhere external and then? It's hosted external. So I'm going to show you like the, uh, the hosting tools. So all, all we're doing is we're wrapping uh, a accountability wrapper around the content that's that's desperate uh, out there. Yes. And that, like what five licenses for the sous chef program right before you had this? Yeah. Is there a way to tie the two together now, or tie the two together? Well, I mean. Well, that, that's uh, static content that can't, can't be, it's not on the web, so it can't be placed in it. Yes? We need to post secondary level when students buy access codes and they can access it from anywhere. And 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they can own the laptops, they can put home, they can look at it, the phones are. We use it every class our students have access to it per class registration. I use it in every class I teach. Build content around 
his content around my labs, and we're doing classic sauces tomorrow. A lot of brother sauces. We're going to learn how to watch the videos, do the roux, do the self-assessment. They have to do that before they come to class. And they walk in. First time they made a roux. Not the first time they made it. It's not the first time they've seen it. So we do the online access, and it's working extremely well for us. And I track it online by going and seeing that they've done that. They've got a certain color before they come to lab. Yeah, yeah. You can set up those uh, those arbitrary requirements to say you have to make it to green uh, before we go in the lab, or or yellow. Or, you know. And this is like you know, this is just one example. The, the numbers in the parentheses just represent how many times the student has gone to the uh, the, the tutor. Now, like I said earlier, like you know, this is this session isn't designed to be a commercial for uh, the uh, the the sous chef uh, content, uh, but you know, full disclosure, that's how I make my money. <laughs> but that's also how I create this technology because I've I've had that content and I've uh, been doing this since uh, 1999, and I've always been developing better, newer technology for that content. And the, the, like like uh, 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 Trello. Uh, their by, the byproduct of what they've done is they created this really awesome project management system uh, or, or to-do list on steroids. Uh, the byproduct of what we've done is we've created this really awesome learning management system uh, that uh, works with all the content. Now you're probably saying to yourself, hey, Nai, besides coloring arts, how else are you making money? Well, that's the thing. The thing is uh, we're actually partnering up with other content producers so that they can put their content into this, and that's how we're going to make our money. Is uh, because then it won't be just culinary arts anymore. We're actually, we have work ethic, computer IC3 cert, uh, certification, uh, allergy uh, certification uh, for, uh, for for workers, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, we're going to be doing like auto body collision repair or something like that. So so you know so that's you know full disclosure. That's how we're going to uh, make money, but not by the, the platform. The platform is going to be awesome, and that's why you can use it for free. But other Instead of buying a, an ebook, we want them, to, or instead of them making an ebook, we want them to, to put stuff into a content mastery system like this. So, make sense? All right, so that's the, uh, yes? Is this, this might sound outdated, this is what we use. Is this very similar to Blackboard? Oh, yeah, no, not Blackboard. Because the thing with Blackboard is that it's a classroom management system. So, they don't do, they do everything, but they do everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's boring. There's yeah. no colors. There's no nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, I was and, thinking like I can't. I can track what students do, but there's no way to be saying you need to get to, to this level before you move on. Yeah. At least that I know of. Mm -hmm. so yeah. No, there is no way. And 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 that's that was our entire focus was we wanted to do a a, a student centered environment that focuses on very three three core values, you know. Access to the information, so it's like it's what it's uh, it's HTML5 uh, code base. So that means that you can use a, a cell phone and get to the information. Uh, um, content mastery and accountability to give to give them a, a reason to learn the information. But also, uh, the, the, I forgot to mention the key with, with the uh, the tutor system is that I was, I'll tell Tommy, hey, you go study these, and Tommy will say, but uh, Mr. Wang, uh, what questions did I get wrong? I'm like, well, you need to focus on these areas. But I want to know what I've messed up on. Well, I, I'm telling you, you, know, you need to study these areas. And that's, that's the key to like, you know, creating higher level rigor, is because we don't spoon feed them the information. We actually make them go back to the concepts that they need to learn, because we're giving them feedback. And if they do better, they'll, they'll, their colors will change. And if they do worse, they'll turn red. So if I walk into a test and I have them all red, I know I'm probably going to fail, because it's a snapshot of the student's brain. Okay, so like you know, there's reporting features. You know, you can actually uh, do some research on students. So this student here, um, student called student, um, has uh, waiting for that to compile. I think on the internet, this will actually have a lot of crazy data in this one. So this, this will take a minute. But actually, I could uh, see uh, every single question that the student answered, and I could like you know really go in as a, as an instructor, go in and say, okay. Uh, I got in sauces 11 out of 87 questions correct during my test attempts. And let's look at this one over here. I can see that uh, on page Roo, um, I got those questions correct. Uh, on this page, I got this question wrong, this question wrong. Uh, there were no questions on volute, so on and so forth. So I, so I could identify the, uh, the pages that, 
that the student needs help so I can do some research and all that. Oh, uh, and, and it actually uh, goes a little bit uh, beyond this, uh, uh, just putting the content out there. What we also have uh, is uh, we have uh, what we call uh, big data analytics inside of the engine. So every single uh, student has uh, uh, basically uh, what we do is we track about two to three hundred data points about their usage. So not only does the, the tutor know about you know, how well the, know, the student knows the information, but the tutor also knows what time of day they logged in, how much time they spent on the page, and, and things like that. And because we actually uh, are capturing this uh, additional data, we're, we're able to do something really crazy awesome um, called, well, we, uh, this is just a, de a technology demonstration piece we created about a year ago uh, called Test Overlay. And what Test Overlay does is it allows me to play the what if game. So I go to the tutor, I say, what if I gave um, the students these questions that I checked, our, ch checked off here? Um, and actually, I could select more questions here. Now, what if I gave the students these set of questions right now, this very second? How would they do? And then I go, okay, well, let me uh, go through a series of algorithms and, uh, uh, and let's see. Okay, according to my understanding of the student, I feel that student will get a B with 82% certainty, uh, where uh, Nye would get an F with a 50% certainty. The certainty is actually just a, a, a value of like how well the tutor knows the student. So if the student doesn't use the tutor that much, then the tutor will be like, I'm not sure, but that's my best guess. So the more they interact with it, the, more, the, the better understanding we have. And then we're also building like other tools, like you know, um, a dropout prevention tool, where like you know, if a student's training in a certain certain uh, way, uh, we use uh, social banding, which will actually say you're training like this, like three uh, three thousand other students, you know, teacher, maybe you need to. Well, you probably already know this, but let's send a. But the thing is, if you don't know, then that's good too. <laughs> but you'll be able to uh, analyze that data and do like you know, intervention points, uh, um, so that so that you can. Take care of any needs. Okay, so enough about that. So uh, how do we do this? Well, let's go ahead and go into the next tool that I'm going to show you is uh, uh, Google Drive. Actually, well, actually, before we get to that, uh, anybody here use Nmodo? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Nmodo is uh, is is a really good tool, and it's free. Um, it's, it, its sole purpose is to create a Facebook-like environment for schools. So a lot of schools are using it to, you, to do the Facebook-like things. So you can post on the wall, you can do, uh, you can do uh, uh, messages, and, uh, and people can, uh, and there's like a lot of uh, educator-friendly tools on it as well. So uh, there's really not much I could uh, demonstrate, uh, but like, you know, if, if you're familiar with Facebook, basically has everything that Facebook does, but in a secure education environment. So you set up a class, you have your students log, sign in and get into your class and then you can start posting messages on the, the wall. So I, I would encourage you just to go and uh, ch check it out. You know, you can set up assignments, create little quizzes, uh, put notes, you know, put up a poll or something like that and then uh, have them interact that way. <coughs> Oh, actually, uh, speaking of Blackboard, uh, anybody use any like you know, uh, learning systems uh, like Blackboard or anything online right now? So, actually, just ca call out what you use. Uh, Blackboard. Blackboard. Moodle. Haiku. Haiku. Blackboard. 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 Moodle. 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 Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, I use uh, my lab stuff too. My labs. Okay. Yeah, so the, I mean, the, those are like uh, classroom manager tools, which don't do really well with content. And what we're doing is we're creating context within content. Okay, so that's uh, Edmodo. Then next we have here uh, is, let me just. All right, so we're gonna talk about Google Drive. Anybody use uh, Google Drive or Dropbox? One, two, all right. So what basically Google Drive is, is Google Drive is actually a rebranding of Google Docs, but they kind of expanded it even more. 
And what it is, it's, it's an online cloud-based uh, server, in a way, where you could create documents and, uh, and share it with other people. But also, you could, you could upload things like pictures, uh, vi videos, and, and everything else like that. So to illustrate Google Drive, so this is my Google Drive uh, account. So I have the documents in here. So I have like you know the spreadsheet, uh, uh, this document, the Word document here. This is how I, I sh uh, share with people like you know how uh, how to use it. Like you know this is the quick start guide. So I click on it, and this is the document. And the reason why anybody use any uh, cloud-based document solutions right now? Uh, nope. Okay. So so the, so I'm going to go a little bit about. Uh, uh, why cloud-based uh, documents are superior to everything else. So the, the problem with like you know with with Word docs is like you know you have a physical file which you have to transport and email to people, but then when you email to somebody, you're creating an iteration of that. So is it the most up-to-date document? Is it uh, version two, version three, version four? Oh, let, let me just email it to another person. You emailed the wrong one, <laughs> and then and then like all hell breaks loose. So with online documents. This is live, so when I'm looking at it, it's always the most current. So if I do this here, hello. Currently I have one other viewer viewing this document. They just saw me type hello on this document. So that way it's always up to date and it's always the most current. You can collaborate with other people too. So, oops, I just stared at the, uh, the projector and I have a big old <laughs> spot in the middle of my vision right now. Oops. Yeah. Fix my live document. All right. And it also has version history. So I could go back to um, uh, what I changed yesterday or the day before that, where you can actually see like who made the changes. So I wanted to delete everything that, uh, that uh, Tommy did, because Tommy completely screwed up the document. So you go back in time to before Tommy screwed up the document. And you go, Tommy, you screwed up the document. Why'd you do that? You know there's an there's a, uh, auto-save history thing. So they'll never do it again, actually, after that. Um, or if they type for family. So if you, uh, you can do a shared document with your students. You can actually do a shared document with uh, your colleagues. If you're working on a document together, uh, you can do that. So that's, so that's basically what uh, doc documents uh, in, in the cloud means is that it's always there, it's always live, and you can log into it from any computer. So you could be on someone else's computer, and you go, okay, let me log in, okay, here's the document, and pull it up, and, and that's it. So this is called, uh, called a, a Google Doc a online document, and it's really easy to use. So you create this document in here, you can actually upload a Word document, it'll convert it over for you. Uh, here's an example of, uh, let's see here. So this is a, a, a spreadsheet. So this is a live spreadsheet. So it does pretty much almost everything that Excel does without all the fancy stuff that you probably never use, like macros and pivot tables and whatnot. So like you know, so if I'm using this as a as a uh, as a way to post uh, um, progress or or you can say like you know grades or something like that, you can log in. You can do that. Um, Make sure that you're following for both. Do that <laughs> the grades. But the thing is, that if you share this uh, spreadsheet with someone, you know, they can view it and they're viewing the changes live. You can collaborate on the spreadsheet online. So it's all about the accessibility and collaboration. Um, you can also do other things like uh, upload uh, um, PDFs. So this is a PDF that's been uploaded, and uh, there's my boarding pass. <clears throat> so so you could drag all these files. Uh, from your computer into the Google Drive, and now it's online, and you can access it anywhere. <clears throat> and the advantage of that is that now it's living in the cloud, you don't have to worry about that local copy anymore. And after you've got all these files into the cloud, then you would uh, share it with other people. Uh, you could put it on Moodle or Blackboard, um, but let me show you how we do it in KD Compass here. So uh, here in KB Compass, I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call this one Finney. There we go. And then I'm going to come over here and create a new module. I'm going to call it 
stuff. Okay, so let's go over here. Gosh, I have a lot of stuff in here. There we go, Fanny stuff. So you see that right now the module is blank. Though. There's no content, there's no learning objectives. I can come over here, add an objective. If I know the Common Core State Standard Code, I can type that in there. Blah, 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 blah. So over here, um, I'm going to click on Manage Content. So this is that button right here. And under that, uh, I have this button over here called Add a Google Doc. So I click on this, and I go, OK, I want the Quick Start Guide. So I click on that, and hit OK. Then uh, let's go ahead and add something else. Let's do uh, uh, spreadsheets. Uh, travel organizer, there we go. And let's do a presentation. Now that Google has its own PowerPoint version, but uh, it doesn't do a good job at converting, so I'm gonna show you uh, next is Slide Rocket, which will uh, do a much better job at converting. So let's do this presentation. Uh, level zero. And um, Google Form, actually uh, I'll show you this later. It's a really great way for students to, uh, to make uh, submissions. So basically it's an online form and it gets dumped into a spreadsheet. And PDF, let's look at a PDF. It's a user guide. So you can see that's a, you know, it's, once you have it in the cloud, it's really easy. You just kind of put it all together. Um, now here's a video for a Good Sam Society, Good Samaritan Society. So I'm going to put that in there. And um, OK, so that, that's a good slate. So I come over here back to the module. So I just clicked on the module. And I want to move this uh, up here. Uh, so I'm, right now I'm crafting the students um, um, learning path. And I go over here, okay, so this is the Quick Start Guide. So you see that um, it's a live document right in here. Let's check that. This is a uh, video. And actually, this is a really good point. Like, uh, how many of your schools block YouTube? Raise your hand. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad to see the numbers less. YouTube is a fabulous uh, uh, resource. Um, for videos, but, if, but for those of you who had a block, just you could uh, upload a video to Google Drive, and now it's being shared um, through the Google Drive. And the advantage of that is that you have the power of YouTube behind that that video file. So, that, so it's a very very powerful tool because YouTube is really great at maximizing the video stream. Uh, they're really, I mean, it's Google. So, so. Can you say that again? Upload it to Google Drive. Yeah, Google Drive is, is basically where I'm pulling all the documents. Okay. So this is a video. Um, so, so you can see it. Right now this is being streamed live. I'm uh, streamed over the internet. Dear friends, I'm Greg Wilcox. And I'm delighted to have these few moments with you. Okay, so that's Greg Wilcox. Then, you know, here's the, uh, the spreadsheet. And then so on and so forth. So, so, that's, so now that the information is assembled, this is, this is the form. And uh, so you could actually, you know, students can say, you know, write an essay, you know, fill out your name, write an essay about this question, uh, you know, so on and so forth. And then when they submit it, it'll get dumped into a spreadsheet. And it's time stamped too, so you know exactly what time they submitted it as well. And I hit submit. And then this is the presentation. So it's my iPad presentation. And then I get taken to the test. But oh wait, there's no questions yet. So all I have to do is just go to each page and say, okay, what's, the, what's on this page? And then I come over here and I go, okay, I'm gonna write questions about that. And now I've just created mastery. Recommendation is a minimum of five questions, average about eight or nine. So if you, know, you, can't, if you can't achieve that, that's okay. But if you don't have a large, a large amount of questions, it's harder to create mastery. So if it's like two questions, then the student will be asked the same two questions over and over again. But if you create more questions, uh, it'll, it'll create that uh, level of, uh, not really randomness, but you know, different, different level of uh, higher rigor. 
itself. And I'm just going to add a question here, and then so on and so forth. There we go. So um, in about um, five minutes, there will be a M and a, probably a B or uh, appear next to it, which basically stands for Mastery Basic, where we have Mastery Basic, Intermediate, and Advanced. And those values actually change, because if a page gets passed very easily by the students, then it starts to become from uh, advanced to basic. Or if a basic page gets, uh, gets, uh, doesn't get passed very easily, then, it, it's, it, then those, those ratings change because it's pulling, pulling that data. Okay, so that's, that's Google Drive. Now, Google Drive is, is, is free, you know, like I said earlier. And uh, you get five gigs of space for free. Now, if you need more than that, you pay like, I, I can't remember, like $50 a year or something for like, for more space. Well, actually, I'll just click on this and find out. How much is more space? Okay, 25 gigs for $249 a month. Oh gosh, that's not bad. 100 gigs for $5 a month. That's not bad at all. So if you have a lot of videos you want to store, but you don't want it on YouTube, you can do, you can do that. Okay, so another one that I was showing you earlier was Dropbox. Now Dropbox is great because, uh, this is my Dropbox account. Uh, that just, it's got really nothing in it because uh, it's, I created this for show. I have another one that's full. You get two gigs for free, and it's just another way to store files in the cloud. And uh, the advantage of the, the, with Dropbox, it's, uh, it's, it's like Google Drive, but it does things slightly differently. One thing, the thing I like about Dropbox is that um, you could actually uh, share a folder. So I'm going to create a folder. Click on new folder, call it Fendi. And then you could come on in here. I could drag files into it. So let's drag this uh, presentation into here. So it's being uploaded. And I can share this with students. Now the students can access the files in, that I put in there. Much like, uh, much like Google Drive. Actually, you know, Google Drive does, does it actually a little bit better than that. But the other thing is like, you know, students can actually upload files into that drive. Or they have their own drive and they can share their drive with you. So, so you can actually you know, use it as a, a, a submission tool for that. So now that's in here. It's in the cloud. So if I click on it, it's going to download it. And I'm not going to do that. So if I want to share this folder, um, all I do is click on you know, share link. So, yeah. And then it'll, it'll send a link to whoever wants to receive it. And then, uh, and then uh, they have to have an account to be able to uh, view that folder. But you can also share individual files, uh, but you have to make it public first. So let's go back to share link. Oh, wait, that's right. I don't think you could do that anymore. Um, last July, they removed public sharing for new accounts, I think. <laughs> because I know, I know they changed the policy, but then recently they added a new feature that uh, brought, brought back public sharing, but in a different way. So, yeah, even I have a difficult time keeping up with the times. <laughs> So like, you know, this is a, um, a PDF document, and then I could uh, come over here and I copy the public link. Now since it's a public link, that means that anybody who has that string uh, can get to that file. So I can email it to everybody, and so forth. So, so Dropbox and Google Drive is putting files and content into the cloud so that it's easily accessible. I can log in on my iPad over here and access the files uh, in, Google, uh, in Dropbox and Google Drive. Uh, oops, I just closed it. Oh, we don't need any more. But, uh, Google, but Dropbox is better for just file management. So you're just working with files. Where Google Drive you know, has all these other advanced features, sharing collaborations, and things like that. So, so you, know, you, you could focus on one, or you could use both. Like for just sheer file transfer, we just dump a lot of files into Google Drive, share that folder with another person, and now they have it. They can download it as well. OK, so any questions on Google Drive? or Dropbox. So what do you think about those tools? Thumbs up? Yeah, OK. Wake, wake up. <laughs> cool. Now now, we're, now, the next thing we're going to go into is what we call Slide Rocket. Now Slide Rocket, what it does is uh, it you can take a PowerPoint file, and you could 
upload it into Slide Rocket. So right now it's loading. And after you upload it, it's going to convert it. Now there's other uh, online services that are free, like SlideShare, um, that does the conversion too. But what, but the thing I like about Slide Rocket is that it actually retains transitions and animations, where uh, the other one strips it all away. So it's just the static content. So like you know, so here I have like you know, here's an example of one presentation. Like, you know, I call it my presentation. And after it's uploaded and converted, I can actually come in here and edit it. And because it's in the cloud. Um, if I change a the slide, then everyone has that same copy because they're viewing it live. So I can, I'm going to click on this. Click on it. There we go. And I go over here and I can go, okay, I want to edit it. Yeah, because I'm on a slightly slower internet, this will probably take a, a while. I would recommend doing this on a broadband connection. But okay, I'm, I'm going to. Oh, cool! Here comes the editor. Because it's it's an actually a really robust online editor. So this is the cloud-based editor. So you have. Let's go here. There you go. So you have a lot of things you can do. So it's not just you can just change a few words. You can like add video, slides, uh, charts, plug. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff with this and create uh, uh, and edit it. Although, you know, my preference is do it on PowerPoint and upload and convert it. <laughs> um, but if you do need to make a last minute change, you go, okay, I need to change this text to creative. There you go. And then you save, it, uh, save that change. All right, so let's go back. And after you, oh. <coughs> because I probably shouldn't have hit back back there. After you've uh, edited, you know, then, then what you do is it provides you a link, so you can actually share that link to other people, so they can view that PowerPoint presentation. But the, the best part about this is that um, you could, uh, what we call, embed that, that PowerPoint presentation. And the embed tool is something that you can use to put it uh, anywhere. So like, you know, if you have a blog, you could put the, the presentation in that blog. Um, so here's the embed code. So it looks like this, like, you know, gobbledygook here. I copy that, but uh, we use embed codes in our system. So let's go ahead and click on this, add embed, paste that. Did I, paste, did I copy it? Oh, I probably did. Get embed code, copy code. Okay. Paste that. Call this one a oh, slide rocket. Okay. Okay. Oops. And then. There it is. So there's the presentation being loaded in the frame. Question. Yes. Um, if you're using PowerPoint presentations from, uh, say, a book that are available online, yeah. which are copyrighted, is, is it possible to use this with them? Or is that well, that, that goes into the gray area of, uh, of uncertainty. Yeah. So it, 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 is it right to, <laughs> to upload it for your own personal use? Um, I don't know what the exact laws are. Uh, I would consult with your uh, your lawyer. Lawyer, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, if it's private, maybe because this is a private this is a private uh, uh, site. So it's not like you're putting it out there for the world, right. but you're putting it out there for your students to access at home. So it's like, okay, well, is it the same as me emailing that PowerPoint to a student? Or it's, it's one of those like, you know, gray areas. It's, it's like, you know, hey, I'm going to copy this page from the textbook. <laughs> you know. That's why I'm asking, you know, like, is it, I mean, what, will this accept? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. It will accept it because okay. it's a PowerPoint, unless if it's password protected. <laughs> So yeah, legalities aside, yes, it can do it. It can do it, and it can do it well. So anyway, um, so that's uh, Slide Rocket, and here's SlideShare. Now the difference between SlideShare and Slide Rocket is that uh, it's kind of like it's a public forum, so you can search for food safety, and you can see what other people have uploaded, uh, in, as far as uh, PowerPoints, and you can use use their PowerPoints too. Kind of like you know, kind of like the YouTube for PowerPoints. Now speaking of YouTube. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, this really funny video for a few seconds. 
on food safety. Um, anybody seen this video before, the food safety music video? No? So with YouTube, I'm going to show you how you can embed that, uh, this video right into the So this is a really cool video. Buddy, you're a young man, dumb man, careless, and you're going to make someone quite sick someday. You got spores on your plate, they'll eat you big. There's trouble if you cross contaminate. Okay, anyway, that's a really amazing video. It's a really good way to like kind of spice up your learning module. You're, like, you're talking about food safety, it's a really dry subject. You throw that video in, in the light. So I'm going to show you how to do that. YouTube gives us the ability to share. The third, but the very first thing it gives you is the link. We don't want the link because the link goes to the website and then we get all this uh, advertisement and all this other stuff. And that's what we call web crap. We want just the video. So we're going to go over to click on embed, which is right here next to it. And the well, next thing I do is I always turn, usually that's that checked on, so I usually turn this off, which is show suggested videos. Then I come over here and copy that embed code. Then I come over here. Uh, let's go to the content manager and add embed, paste that uh, safety song. And I can say, watch the first two units, and then laugh out loud. OK, and there we go. And now it's in there. Food safety song, <laughs> voila. OK, and then you can watch it again. Make it full screen. There you go. So that's, that's YouTube. Now, and so the beauty of that is like, you know, you're, you're find these great videos demonstrating a specific test. Or you upload your own videos into YouTube as well, and you could uh, you know, link it that way. And the, the good thing about YouTube is that you can set it private, so only people with links can view it. So you can still, if you don't want to put it on Google Drive, let's say you run out of your five gigs, upload it to YouTube, make it private, and then embed that code in there. And then they'll be able to watch it that way. So, so that's, uh, that's YouTube. Wealth of wonderful, wonderful information. And I just realized that, um, I forgot to mention, uh, if you want to use KP Compass, you'll need to contact me. I won't contact you. So when you sign into the site, you're going in as a student. It's not a teacher account. All I have to do is flip a switch, and you're, you have a teacher account. So just tell me, hey, Nye, I want to use KP Compass. It's really awesome. I need it now. And then I'll say, OK, what's your email address? All right, let me flip you on. And then, uh, then you'll have all the tools available. So as a student, you're, you're only consuming information and taking tests. But as a teacher, you can, you can start throwing all this information in and assembling it and creating context. <laughs> okay. So how do we do that? We email you? Yeah. Did I, did I give out my email address somewhere? No, I didn't. Well, I guess I should probably. Well, it's on KP Compass's website. Yeah, there's like it's info at kpcurriculum.com. Actually, wait, I'll I'll put it in the class. So let me go over here and log into the Fenny class. And I'll put it into the class. So this is my Fenny class. Let's say Fenny Flip. Go over here. Message. Nye at kpcurriculum.com. How you can flip your account. Okay, so yeah, when you log in to that class, then you'll have that message posted on your wall. And you know, if you wanted to, you can always click click on me, and then my email's in, in my profile too. So, so that's how you do that. Um, then you know, I, I hope you take advantage of it because. It's, Right now, it's not a public thing. Like, you know, nobody, not everybody, no, nobody can actually just go on the site and then get a teacher account. It's, it's basically, it's, it's a private beta for people I only meet. So, so it's not like you go, okay, I want to sign up for a teacher account. No, not that yet. Although in about six months we will, because we're actually building content creation tools. So let's say you, you build original works in, in the system and you package it in a module, and this is original works, you're, the stuff that you've done, the videos you've done, the, the text that you've written, you know, let's say you wrote, you know, you, you 
you're studying something, uh, oh, anyway, you're writing a paper on, on this subject, you put that co curriculum in there, and you can package it, and then you can uh, um, sell it to other users. So we're building those tools. They're not done yet, but they probably will get done around summertime when everyone's busy. <laughs> um, and that's another way how I'll, I'll make some money. <laughs> okay, so now uh, we have two minutes left, and I went through a huge slate of information. Does anybody here feel overwhelmed? Anybody? A few of you? Okay, great. But the thing is, have you learned any? Uh, have you learned some valuable tools that you can take back to your classroom? Raise your hand. Okay. Anybody disagree with that? No, don't worry. Raise your hand. <laughs> Point that out. I was going to demonstrate how you could take your smartphone, ca capture a video, and upload it to your Google Drive. And it's just as simple as capturing the video, hooking your smartphone, your uh, iPhone up to it, and then uh, and then copying the file and dragging it into the Google Drive account. And then now it's been converted. So, um, so I just want to mention that you can do it. It's really easy. And the, the point about these things is that they're right in your pocket. You don't have to have an expensive camera to create a Hollywood production. In fact, it's sometimes like, you know, just in the moment, like I'm doing this knife cut, I want to record it right now, and I want to post it so that I, can, so that I don't have to do it again. Just do it, you know? Don't, don't make it into a big ordeal. Don't think, like, you know, I have to set up the lighting correctly. I mean, yeah, you want some lights. And, uh, and the audio, is that, is that fine? Is the audio fine? You know, um, because you, got, you can actually, like, oh, um, well, if you really wanted to, you could, like, you know, voice over it later. But, um, but the easiest thing is just record it, put it up, and then you're done. And then you can link it do a, lots of stuff. So it's really easy to do and just do it, um, YouTube. And the last one that uh, I'm not going to really talk much about is screen capture. Now screen capture, uh, I'm just going to talk about it, but that's actually the only non-free or the only paid service because, uh, and what it is is, um, anybody use uh, screen capture, electric capture software in here? Nobody? Good, because it's boring. I hate it. But anyway, but a lot of teachers do that, so they do a PowerPoint slide, um, and then they record it and talk about that lecture, so they're recording a video of a lecture. And that's actually very, very uh, popular um, amongst uh, different divisions, so, and, and it's, a, it's another way to, to, uh, to dispense uh, the lecture by recording the screen, so I'm going through the presentation, the microphone's sitting here, and I'm recording it, and I'm moving the mouse around and, and talking about the stuff on the subject. Now the reason I don't like it is because it's really boring. Unless if you, you know, don't do a really good job at spicing up the presentation. So, but it's another way to for you to convey uh, your lecture um, and record it by recording the screen. Uh, a very popular one is called Camtasia. I think that's around forty dollars or something like that. And uh, like it's not bad, I guess. You know, think about it. But that's what I've actually used in the, in the past to be able to package it, upload it to YouTube. Or whatnot. Um, for those of you who have iPads, another, a really good one uh, is called um, EduCreations, which actually allows you to to draw on the iPad and it will actually record what you're doing. Uh, if you're like you know do, you know finger doodling, and and um, and uh, basically kind of record the process. EduCreations is a free app. Now there's a really awesome paid one that's four dollars. Ooh, there, yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh, I can't have that uh, mochaccino espresso latte uh, with a twist of lime, right? <laughs> but the thing is, like, you know, it's another one that has even better tools. So that's that was my that, that was a really awesome find that that, I, that that's a teacher turned me on to uh, a couple months ago. And that one's called Explain Everything. <laughs> Explain Everything. Okay. So, but this isn't about iPads. But I see some of you have iPads. It's a really great way because you package it and you can upload it, and now you have. Uh, like kind of like the Khan Academy style of videos where you're, you're, you're doing, and then you're doing this, and then you're doing that, and you can you know, doodle on it. And I see a hand back there. Yeah, just, what do you think of some of the teachers in other areas that use wiki spaces? Yes. And what do you feel about that? Uh, wiki spaces are great, but it's becoming dated now because there's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot of uh, tools out there that that do what wiki spaces does. And actually, like you know, I was a big, huge proponent of wiki spaces four years ago. You know, because like you know, students can like you know, on this uh, site like you know, add, make additions and edits and things like that. And it's another great collaboration <coughs> tool as well. Um, but like you know, with uh, with like you know, Google Docs, with like all these other tools that are that, that are more fleshed out. 
um, it, it's actually better. So I, I do still, still support wiki spaces, but I found that a lot of educators have a difficult time um, really grasping that, uh, that format. Um, so that's why I don't, uh, so what I'm trying to do is focus on easy stuff here. <laughs> yeah, but it's very powerful and, and it's advanced. You can do a lot of amazing things with it. Yes? Curator? curator? No, I have not heard of curator. It's very similar to what There's actually uh, quite a few, uh, a lot of them in the, in the space. Um, but um, I guess the only thing I can say is that the unique uh, angle that we have is we're actually gathering data analytics to make intelligent decisions, where other people are just put the information up and then you have a simple quiz. Um, I, well, I, the platform itself is geared toward any education. So the, the fact that uh, that I created the culinary arts project um, it was because I had that was the content I had to work with. So so actually, um, the, when you think of it that way, you know we weren't teaching math to kids. We we're teaching culinary arts. So our audience is very different than th that audience. And but the thing is, our this technology can go that way, uh, where the other people were building these like, you know, math curriculum systems and, you know, it, it doesn't adapt to, um, the, to like, you know, random learners like myself. It's a pretty broad range yeah. platform, but I just didn't know if you were familiar with it, if you had opinions one way or the other. No. Yeah, uh, I'll do more research on that. Uh, Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, can you write that down and, uh, and give me give it to me? Good. All right. So um, we've r ran over time, but how's there? Is everyone great so far? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Cool. Any other questions before we conclude? And and basically, um, just kind of like a quick announcement. We have our uh, reception at the Art Institute, which is uh, out the doors and around the corner. It's really close, uh, and that starts at five thirty. Uh, so it's a it's a networking reception and uh, and uh, and I was also told that to dress warmly. Uh, I mean it's cold outside, but um, but but the inside is actually uh, it's not warm. It's, I think it's cold, right? Is that true? Why would it be cold? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be cold. Huh? It's in the art gallery. Yeah, it's inside the art gallery, and there's a lot of windows and oh, Diane. Yeah, there's a lot of windows. So maybe maybe it's cooler. Than yeah, Diane said it will be chilly. It's probably a little chilly inside. So, so just uh, dress warmly anyway. Okay, cool. So, um, so, so, what, be sure to fill out the evaluation. Any other questions? Are you, you going to be around like tomorrow morning? Or? I'm your masters of ceremony, so I'm here tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday. <laughs> so you can reach me anytime, and I'll be like in the uh, master classes and stuff like that. So I'm not just a speaker. I'm, I'm an active participant. I love I love what I do. I love Fenny. I love uh, you know reaching out to uh, culinary arts educators because this is how I got started. You, know, you guys put me on the map. You know, think about that. You know, if I if, if you guys didn't embrace the, 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 the products and the technology that that I created, then I wouldn't be here to, uh, talking about these amazing things. So thank you very much, everybody, and have a good day. All right. Oh, I got a thumbs up. Oh, evaluations? Um, you can bring it up here or leave it on your table.